I've been wondering how the rockets work. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, just like when the balloon flies away. <coughs> Got it? Yeah, but let me show you. We take a bottle of soda, put a cork in, and pump air inside so that the pressure here pushes soda down, which in turn pushes the cork and soda gushes out. This is the action that causes the bottle to go up, called the reaction. You'll understand once you see it. Alright, but what does this play up? To change the nozzle and throw away dry mass. Wait, what? This is the nozzle. It consists of a converging and a diverging section. The hot exhaust leaves the combustion chamber and converges down to the minimum area called throat. The role of this throat is to choke the flow. For subsonic flow, a decrease in the section causes velocity to increase, just like choking a water hose. For supersonic flow, an increase in the section causes the flow velocity to increase too. Diversion section has an important effect on the exhaust pressure. The bigger the diversion section, the less exhaust pressure there is. When the tanks are empty, we let down the heavy first stage, and according to Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, the separation translates to an even greater acceleration. The second stage has another shape of nozzle. The diverging section is bigger so that the exhaust pressure becomes equal to the ambient pressure, which is lower the higher we get. Now that it has reached the space, how will the fuel burn without oxygen? As you saw before, we take our own pressurized oxygen in form of LOX or liquid oxygen, which is combined with fuel and then burned in the combustion chamber. Okay, now I understand. Go learn. Experiment. Don't just take my word for it. You can learn anything, anywhere in the world. Just desire it strongly enough. This was my participation in Race to Space competition. Thanks for watching.